Hi all and welcome to another Watercolor Wednesday video. Today we are welcoming the winter season with this ice cave painting, so grab your supplies and let's get started. So I opted to uh, tape the borders of my watercolor piece of paper as I always do using scotch tape. This just allows for a clean and crisp look once we are finished the painting. And then you want to quickly sketch your painting. So I just took a pencil and drew two jaggedy lines on uh, opposite corners and this is going to represent my ice cave and then I also drew some mountains in the background and sort of a horizon line. And once you have that in place you want to start painting the sky. Now what is really important in this particular painting compared to other watercolor paintings or my other tutorials is that you want to be very, very detailed with the borders of your ice cave. So we're basically painting everything but the ice cave first. And you can see that I painted the sky there using a few different um, hues of blue. And I made sure to make those edges really clean and crisp and sharp. And I'm going to do the same thing with the mountains, uh, the borders that touch the caves, as well as the snow on the bottom that you just saw me paint. The snow is later going to turn into water because I decided against my initial idea, so uh, you can ignore that part for now. But I went ahead and just filled in that white space for where I wanted my mountains to be with a slightly um, darker color of blue. I added a little bit of black in with the blue um, just because I wanted the mountains to stand out from the super blue sky. I painted two or three layers just until I was happy with the opacity of my mountains and you can definitely do the same. Here I am painting the third layer and I, uh, I really wanted the edges to stick out for this mountain, so I wanted it to look jaggedy. So I made sure to make one side of the mountain a little bit of, a little bit darker to insinuate shade, and I also added some white watercolor on the sides um, to make it look like there was a little bit of snow on top. Uh, and you can also do the same. Okay, so now comes the really fun part. You want to make sure that what you have painted so far is completely dry. So if you want to ensure that it is dry, you can just run a hair dryer over it real quick. But you are now going to cover the white portions uh, that, you, that you left, basically the ice cave portions. You're going to apply a thin layer of water and you can go over it a couple of times just to make sure that the water layer is even and you don't have pools forming anywhere. And then you're going to take a light baby blue color and you're going to apply it uh, all over that white space, making sure to leave a tiny little border of white on the edges. And this is what's going to give off that really cool icy, icy cave look. So just make sure to leave a little bit of white space um, just on the border. And as you get uh, further or closer into your corner, you want to start adding darker shades of blue. So I added uh, darker blues as well as a little bit of black just to intensify the contrast. And you can definitely do the same. Um, you can even add multiple layers. So let one layer dry, then you know apply another layer of water over top, and then add more pigment until you are satisfied with the opacity of your uh, ice cake. See, I wasn't really happy with how this painting was turning out. Um, it just looked way too blue to me and plain and I was almost going to throw it out. But then I'm like, nope, I'm going to finish it because this happens every time I think my painting looks horrible. I just paint it with, you know, I just paint it until the end and it ends up usually looking really nice. So here I decided to change the sky to sort of a galaxy pattern. Um, so it's going to be nighttime in this photo. And 
I added different colors, so some blues and purples and deep reds just to, you know, achieve that galaxy look. And I, again, I was really um, detailed here. I made sure to outline that uh, border of the ice cave really specifically and I've linked the brushes that I use in the description if you want to purchase them and add them to your collection. Um, I'm using I believe the size 1 Grumbotcher here but it's again it's in the link in the description um, and this just helped me uh, have a little bit more control because the size 14 brush that I was using before was a little bit too big to achieve the detail that I wanted. So what you didn't see me do is turn the snow into basically water um, and making the water reflect the colors of the sky. Uh, and I also took some white watercolor from a tube uh, and I just made the edges of the ice caves a little bit more jagged and sharp. Uh, you can use white acrylic paint, which I ended up using later on. I went over it again with white acrylic paint uh, just because I wanted it to be a little bit more flashy, a little bit more bright to make the icy cavey look um, a little bit more realistic. Once that had dried, I decided to add some pine trees to the bottom portion of the painting. I added little black um, outcrops as well, just to make it look like the trees weren't floating in the middle of nowhere, and I painted on about six pine trees. I also added some pine trees in the background at the base of the mountain. Uh, I used my size 1 Grand Butcher brush again, but I also have a quadruple zero brush by Windsor & Newton, which I've also linked in the description. I use that brush most of the time when I'm doing very, very fine detail work. Uh, most of the time it's actually when I'm painting pine trees. Uh, so take a look at that if, if you're having troubles with getting the, the really fine details. I also splatted some white acrylic paint onto my sky so it looked like there were stars in the night sky and I just did this by watering down the acrylic paint a little bit. I wasn't quite happy with that ice cave uh, opacity yet so I added yet another layer of water and then intensified that uh, color gradient so I added even more baby blue and darker blues and some black in the corners just to make it really stand out and pop. And like I mentioned earlier, I took some white acrylic paint and just went over those jagged areas um, because the white watercolor from the tube that I was using wasn't quite opaque enough, so I just wanted to really make those details st stand out. finished so peel off that tape if you opted to apply tape at the beginning of your painting and we are all finished thank you so much for watching my tutorial don't forget to check out my previous video subscribe if you want to see more and like this video thank you so much